Hi everyone, Fenris Models here, and as you've requested, this week we're going to be taking a look at my build out of Hasegawa's AH-64 Apache Longbow in 172nd scale. We'll start with a quick scan of the instructions, which is important so we're aware of any places that may need cutting, drilling, filling, or other such modifications. Fortunately, there was no need for any of that in this kit. With that out of the way, we can move on to removing parts from the sprue. Using my trusty snips, I snipped out the pieces for the first two steps and placed them on the instructions for safekeeping. These were then cleaned up with a hobby blade before being assembled. Each piece was dry fitted in place before a thin bead of Tamiya Extra Thin was run along the connection points, fastening them in place. Once everything was assembled, the entire cockpit got a coat of Vallejo model color black, 70.950, thinned down with El Vallejo's airbrush thinner, 71.161, at a 5 to 1 paint to thinner ratio. The pilots were up next, getting a mix of Model Air USAF Olive Drab and Model Air USAF Green applied to their flight suits. as well as USAF Olive Drab applied to the helmets, model color black for the boots and visor, and model color flat flesh on their faces. I set the two aside to let them dry. During the time painting the pilots, the cockpit pieces had dried enough for me to add in the five panel decals. These are simply soaked in warm water until the decal had lifted and could be moved, and then they were slid into place with a cocktail stick. Now, admittedly, the instructions did call for this first one to be applied before assembling the cockpit pieces. I should have listened and done that at that step, because I was at an awkward angle here, um, and it took all sorts of finagling to get the decal into just the right position. Any excess moisture was soaked up with the cotton bud, which also helped push any water or air out from under the decal. The pilots then received a quick coat of Tamiya panel liner accent color brown before getting glued into their seats. And then the cockpit could be sandwiched between the two fuselage halves. I let the extra thin set up and cure while I moved on to the next two steps, which included building and installing the engines, tail rotor, and tail stabilizers, followed by the undercarriage, rotor and radar dome assembly, munitions, and wing assemblies. With everything assembled, we can start painting. One thing to note, I did mask the canopy as a whole rather than trying to worry about the canopy frame, and you'll see why in a little bit. While I had the blackout to do my usual pre-shading, I decided to start with the rotors. Using a paper towel from some fast food takeout to catch any overspray, I hit each rotor with a nice even coat on top, and then on bottom. Next, it was time to start the pre-shading. This time, I did things a little differently than normal. Before beginning, I removed the needle cap from the airbrush. 
I had always been under the impression that the needle cap helped to keep the spray focused in addition to protecting the needle, but as it turns out, removing the cap actually allowed me to get an even finer spray. I still wasn't super clean with my lines here as usual. Um, that bit of unevenness with the line aids in giving some tonal interest beneath the base coat. However, with the needle cap removed, that tonal variation winds up coming out much more controlled. I'm not sure just how much I prefer one over the other, but it's definitely something I want to keep experimenting with. Once the pre-shading was complete, I taped up the rotor blades and gave everything a coat of Model Air USAF Olive Drab. And again, as usual, I try to allow the black lines to still show through on the base coat. I'm not trying to paint over the whole thing, I still want that pre-shading to come through in the end. I set the Apache aside to let the paint dry, and then I could start on some detail painting. First, the gun barrel on the M230 was picked out in Vallejo Metal Color Silver 77.724, along with a few other small details. Metal Color Steel, 77.712, was also used to pick out the engine exhausts. Then Tamiya X27 Clear Red and X23 Clear Blue were used on the position lights. The chaff dispenser was then picked out in black, along with the tail rotors that did not get painted earlier. And yeah, there's only two blades there, I'll get to that in a second. But I did get the other two painted up as well. Black was also applied to the tires. And then finally, some olive drab was used to fix any spots that needed touching up. Once all the paint was dry, I took the model outside and hid it in a coat of Tester's Extreme Lacquer Wet Look Clear in preparation for decals and panel lining. The decals were cut from the sheet and soaked in warm water in the same manner as the decals for the instrument panels. Using a wet finger and a cocktail stick, I moved them into position and then squeezed out any excess water or air underneath with a cotton bud. Larger decals, like the stenciling for United States Army, also received a quick application of Microsol to soften the decal and allow it to lay as flat as possible, giving a painted on effect. After the decals had time to sit and bond to the model, I then went over all of the panel lines in Tamiya Panel Liner Accent Color Black. The gloss coat from earlier aided the capillary action in pulling the wash along the panel lines, however the lines themselves were relatively shallow and therefore I wound up needing to almost paint the liner on. Excess panel liner was then cleaned up with the cotton bud damp but not wet with enamel thinner. I made sure to wipe in the direction of either airflow or gravity as made sense in order to give an additional faux weathering effect. And there was one last thing that needed to be completed before we could call it done. Once the masking tape was removed from the canopy, I needed to paint on the canopy frame. And to be honest, this one was a nightmare. The molded lines for the canopy were super shallow and low profile to the point where I almost couldn't feel them at all. Even with turning the plastic in the light, it was hard to see them. This resulted in a very bad, uneven finish on the canopy frame. Usually, I can take a cocktail stick and rub away any paint that gets outside of these lines, but the lines were so shallow even this technique was rendered absolutely useless. Oh well. But with that, I can at least call this one complete. Let me know in the comments what you thought of this build and if there's anything I can do better on the next one. Again, this is my second helicopter in recent years and probably only my fourth or fifth ever, so overall, I'm pretty satisfied with it. Probably the worst thing were those tail rotors. Two of the blades, two, sheared off by lightly grazing that fast food napkin. How did it even do that? I have no idea. And the connection point was so small, the blades just didn't want to glue back on, and I don't know, I guess I should now figure out some sort of diorama for this kit or something. We'll see. But overall, I definitely had fun with this kit and enjoyed myself with it. And at the end of the day, isn't that the whole point of modeling? Thank you to my gift set tier patron, Cali Bear. And thank you for watching. 
Let me know in the comments below what you thought of this build, as well as what you think I should tackle for the next build. I'm leaning towards the second place subject on that poll, which was the Jurassic Park Explorer, but mm, we'll see. If you're enjoying my content and would like to support the channel, maybe stop on by my Patreon at patreon.com slash Fenris Models. Or if you just want to keep watching, how about take a look at this video here? Regardless, I'll see you all next week, and in the meantime, stay safe and keep modeling.